Hi, I'm Max Temkin, one of the co-creators of Cards Against Humanity, and this is Tabletop Deathmatch, a competition to find the next great tabletop game. Last year, over 500 people submitted their unpublished games to a panel of expert judges. 16 finalists came to Gen Con to pitch their games in person, and one of those games will win a first printing paid for by Cards Against Humanity and be named the champion of Tabletop Deathmatch. My name is Mark Major. I'm Christina Major. Our game is Jupiter Deep. The Game Crafter, uh, the site that does um, all of the components of the game, it's a print-on-demand service. They have four contests a year for creating games, so one of their contests was for creating cooperative games. So I had a game that I had been working on for a while that was a cooperative game, and things just kind of weren't working right, so I kind of took that as an opportunity to say, you know, let me see what I can do if I just create a, an entire cooperative game from scratch and, and see if I can solve all of those problems. And I had an idea and I went with it and then everything kind of came together. Yeah, it was amazing because like it took him about two months from the start of Jupiter Deep to like really get it all orchestrated and together and play tested it and it just came together. Okay. Oh crap, I, I rolled a six. I'm the, the, the game designer. I'm the one who actually came up with the idea of the game, um, you know, implemented everything, did all of the initial prototypes. My role, I, I play tested a lot, I contributed a couple ideas, um, and, and we've just been kind of bouncing ideas back and forth throughout the development process. No, you, you do more than that. You, you're definitely more of the, the, the PR end of this. Yeah, and, and pushing him forward saying, hey, you should enter a deathmatch contest. That's an excellent idea. I, no, I'll just, I'll just guide this guy. Okay. The earliest game that I've worked on as far as like a tabletop game uh, is called Zerpang, which stands for zombies, elves, robots, pirates, uh, aliens, ninjas, and gunslingers. Um, I started that in 2006. But at the time, I really didn't have uh, like a lot of friends that did board games, or at least none that, that were near us. So just the development process was kind of slowed a lot by the lack of playtesting. I'm a full-time freelance graphic designer. Um, I went freelance last year, and I do graphic and web design. Um, right now, I'm doing contract work for Nicholas for the, the, some of their video games. Um, it's doesn't fill my week for 40 hours, so I spend most of the rest of the time working on board games. Hi, everybody. Hello. Thank you guys so much for coming. Tell us about Jupiter Deep. My name is Mark Major. This is my wife, Christina Major. Our game is Jupiter Deep. Uh, it is a cooperative game for two to seven players. It plays in about 30 to 60 minutes. You are playing as rescue robots, and you are trying to save the bumbling humans on the Jupiter colony from the aliens that are attacking from all sides. Uh, so on your turn, you will have five actions, and you have to split those between moving yourself, shouting at some nearby colonist to try to you know, get him to go towards the evacuation pod, shooting a creep that's on the same tile as you, or sometimes trading cards with a nearby player. Uh, after you've done all of your actions, then you roll the die, and that determines where the aliens attack from. So aliens will start coming onto the board from all directions on the edges of the board. Aliens will also convert colonists, if they land next to a colonist, into another alien creep. So that can create a chain reaction through the colony that will just, you know, convert everybody into aliens and you'll lose. Uh, the goal is to save 28 colonists. So what will happen is if a, a tile fills up with aliens, it explodes and that exposes the interior. So you're really kind of trying to balance getting colonists off with, uh, you know, keeping the station intact and killing all the creeps. So at the beginning of the game, you're dealt two cards. You get to choose one as your core ability. So that, that is something you get to do every single round. Uh, the rest of them you spend to get the benefit. Sometimes though, when you draw a card, you will get setbacks, and the setbacks will do bad things, like cause extra aliens to uh, invade the station, uh, reduce the number of actions you have on your turn, uh, or force you to discard some cards. Yeah, um, you have to send uh, 28 colonists off the colony total. Um, you send them off in batches of seven and you use the evacuation pod to do that. So um, you do, you load up seven of them, send that off, and then you can reposition it on the colony. So if things start falling apart and they're not going so great, you can, you can definitely 
go around to the other side if you can agree with your with your teammates to um, shepherd more colonists off. There are only 28 seats on the, the, the rescue ship, so you know the acceptable losses are okay. So people seem to engage a lot with the theme of this. They, they get really involved in the fact that they're rescue robots. It's uh, unlike uh, a lot of other uh, cooperative games, you have uh, a much more empowered role. You're not the victim. You're not the one trying to survive. You're the hero of the day. You're trying to go in and save everybody. Um, and you get a lot of cool combinations when you combine cards. Um, you have your core ability, but when you get cards each turn, you can combine them. So you might be able to teleport in somewhere and then just explode everything in your path. And, um, and that's a lot of fun too. There's so many things. There's just this balance between trying to save the colonists and trying to, um, to, to kill the creeps. I mean, there, and sometimes things just get really out of hand and it's, it's almost, it's, it's funny just watching, you know, oh my gosh, we just lost half our colony. That is crazy. All right, uh, thank you guys so much for talking us through the game. Um, Definitely um, interested in the, in the prototype you guys have put together. It looks like um, kind of a mix of some very traditional board game pieces, like kind of the, the Catan hexes, and some really non-traditional stuff, uh, the, the, the pawns and the, these, the clear discs, and uh, it looks like the, the little, um, uh, the, the, these are like special characters. These, these... Yeah, those symbolize your core ability. The thing that you get to do every single turn. I see. So, and are you guys? Is this kind of the final look you're picturing for the game? Is this just? Are these just prototype pieces? Can you can you talk to us about what what you think this will look like when it's actually uh, produced? Well, the version of Jupiter Deep you see in front of you is actually produced on thegamecrafter.com, and it is you can actually go and purchase it right now. Um, for you know a more advanced version, there are definitely some components that I would like to have you know higher quality. They look a little cheap. I kind of like to make them better. Uh, one thing about the game is that you're moving the colonists around a lot, so they kind of need to be it needs to be easy to slide them around the board. So the the threes are power plants and the fours are radar dishes. And correct. How do I know that? Uh, each one has a number in the middle, uh, and you will see a color scheme that is common to all the ones, all the twos, all the threes. So the threes are special because they, if you lose all of them. Um, when, you know, because creeps invade and cause the tile to de be destroyed, then the thing that's keeping the, the colony floating above Jupiter fails and everybody dies. So you list a playtime of 30 to 60 minutes here. Uh, what causes that variance between 30 and 60? Uh, whether or not you lose spectacularly. Okay, so, so the, uh, my follow-up question then is, uh, during your playtesting, how long is it typically taken for you to lose if you're going to lose the game? Unless things go horribly, horribly, horribly wrong, um, you're gonna lose uh, about the middle of the game. Okay, so about the 30 minute mark? Probably. Okay. So two to seven players, five actions per player, so I do my five actions and I'm waiting for 30 more actions. The cooperative aspect of it, you really get to, to talk about what you're doing and who's gonna be focusing on what. So the creeps are coming up in from here, maybe you wanna jump over there next time. And then um, you're also going through your own cards and thinking about what can I do with what I've got. Do you find that seven player games run longer than three player games or? I haven't really seen that much of a difference. Um, yeah. we don't, we've, we've gotten to seven only a few times. We've gotten to six a lot. And everybody seems to stay fairly engaged with what's going on even when it's not their turn. Yeah, I think the important thing is the more players you have, the faster things go wrong. And so you gotta take care of, of more things than you would in a two-player game. So it stays engaging and, and gives that tension. When you do have a cooperative game, it's very easy for someone to dominate the game by telling each other player what to do. What do you have in this game that mitigates that? I think that is very difficult to accomplish in this game because there's a lot of, you don't know what's coming, and there's a lot of sense of, you know, do I go take care of this cluster of creeps over here that's about to destroy things? Or do I get colonists off? Because I'm looking back at the evacuation pod and, oh, we've only got three colonists on there. We need to get cracking on that. So what you're saying effectively is that the amount of hidden information for what's coming up and the challenges is what makes it hard to predict what's coming yes. in the future? Okay. What percentage of the time do people win versus people lose in the play te in the test tube? I think wins are a little of over 50%. Is that what you want? I think I would like to try to make things a little bit harder, so I've had a couple ideas of to tweak things. As a player, how much control do I have over the difficulty of the game? Can I set it 
harder? What sort of things can I talk There about? are various options in the rules to make things harder. Um, you know, right now, just as the base rule set, uh, you can't die. If, you know, the, the tile fills up with creeps in, but you're on it, you actually prevent the, the tile from exploding. Uh, there are also rules for saving more colonists, uh, for, you know, or rules for making it easier. Where do you guys feel that you are with this design? Is there more that you want to do? Do you feel like it's done? And I was also very interested to, to see what you guys thought of the illustrations. Is that a finished product? Is it a work in progress? Um, it's basically finished. I, I would not object to try to taking it to the next level. Uh, I think that uh, you know it could change style. You know, have a professional illustrator do something. There's definitely some some interesting twists and turns we could take into the future of this game. Thank you so much for coming to show it to us. Um, you know, we've definitely got a lot to talk about. Uh, so we're gonna hang on to your prototype for just a minute and kick you guys out so we can go over it. Okay. Thank you very much. Great Thank presentation. Thank you. Really, really interesting. Thing. I wasn't really sure what to expect from the contest because you know it's card against, cards against humanity and you know the games I submitted nothing alike at all so I just wasn't sure what to expect so when I got the email saying that we were finalists I was like hey that's really cool you were doing more than that mm -hmm. there, I believe there was some jumping in the air there was some spinning around in circles I, I remember this uh, judges you want to come up and take a look at the game I'm curious to know what you guys what you guys make of this. I really wish the tiles looked more different from each other. Yes. Oh, yes. Differentiating the tiles Gosh. by putting numbers and yes. colors. Oh. Yeah, Not was, to mention the colors are all the same. I was going to ask you, Max, <laughs> what do you think of the color brown? It's it's a it's an it's a really interesting design case because there's actually like uh, there's a lot of graphic design I like about the game and there's some some good design decisions here, but like. There's other stuff that's just mind-boggling. Like, I would rather have no artwork than these illustrations. Like, I, I'm no, I'm sorry that I know that's a horrible thing to say, but, uh, but there is some good design here. Like, there's some good type. I, I really, I really like the logo. And there is some good design, and I liked it when it was called Pandemic. Like, this game, this game is 80% Pandemic. There's, yeah. there's pieces that are spreading across the board, and you're trying to stem the flow. You have your individual ability and contribution to it. You're like, there's the that that people are switching over, and that you're trying to rescue people instead of, you know. Yeah. But, but the same. So but a lot of the flow where you're going and, and, and attacking the things that are coming on, that things are spreading across the board essentially, that things cascade when something fills up, that, you know, all of that. There's kind of a weird lose condition in here. So, so the win condition is fine. Get, get save 28 colonists by, by moving them out to the pod in groups of seven and then get yourself off the colony. I, I completely buy that. The lose condition is lose too many colonists to creep conversion. I'm not sure what the number is, and, or it's probably so, so that you don't have 20, 20, 20, right? Yeah, and then or lose all power plants in module three, or lose all raider dishes in module four. I mean, it's like that. That might be good. Like it might be good that there's different ways to lose, but it's a little bizarre to me to to have this sort of sense that there's sort of a main loss condition then oh my god we just lost the well that's that's not horrible like forgotten island or forbidden For forbidden, forbidden island, island has the, pretty much exactly the same thing if you have to get all the things off and if it ever comes to the point that you can't do that then you lose but it also comes to the point that if you you lose certain things you lose too that so it's sorry it's, it's the time issue is a big concern with me on this one uh the the time between turns that's a killer even yeah. in cooperative games it, it is I'm, I'm not as concerned just because like five action sounds like a lot because we're used to games where each yeah. action takes forever but five like an action is just is sliding a guy. The thing that really kind of terrified me about that answer was the sense that there's more table talk, like per action. Like yeah. I mean, mm -hmm. it conceivably could be, okay, we talk and now we talk for a minute. Okay, I, I think it's much more likely to be what's your focus this turn, getting people out yeah. of this pot or getting. But but all of that is it is much more realistic that, that seven people is going to be a lot. Yeah. Yeah. And you're going to get a lot less turns per game since the game has I sort of a question if, you know, Especially if you're waiting for your turn, if that's a satisfying turn. All of that said, though, like if this was on my shelf already, I'm, I probably wouldn't buy this if I already own Pandemic. That's definitely true. But if it was on my shelf already and we wanted to play a cooperative game, like, I'd play this. I think it would benefit for nicer components. I really do. Like, I think if they're, especially if you're going to be sliding those dudes around or sliding them in mass or anything like that, like if they were, if the colonists were minifigs or meeples or something like that. Sherry, uh, could you could you talk a little bit about producing this game? 
I think it's a very affordable game. Uh, the, the shapes are chipboard, laminated chipboard, I agree. Meeples or something, at least, would be nice. Uh, something that represents people, they are, after all, people. <laughs> yeah. Maybe the creeps could be some weird shape, but the people should at least look like people. They are, after all, people is kind of a, a meaningful thing to me here. I'm not like, I'm not like, I, not like I don't play games with zombies, conversions and stuff like that, but but it seemed a little cavalier to, to presume that, that everybody would have the reaction of, oh, those are just tokens. Well, I think that, I think that this game is like, is Wall-E, right? It's Pixar's Wall-E. I mean, you're the robots and the, the humans are sort of on the ship, but the robots are running things at this point. I think, it, I wish it would have went more in that direction with the, like the art, that it was more playful than it kind of played up that sort of the, the Pixar-ish exactly, element. That's exactly yeah. the picture I have in my head of like these these like helpless kind of cartoony humans. And yeah. yeah, that would be better. That's, one, that's maybe one of the reasons the art is just not doing it for me. Deadly really serious. Yeah, yeah. That, and that's yeah. the problem for me is I just can't embrace it. Okay, uh, I think we got to get the next game in here, um, but uh, definitely um, some some cool stuff here to uh, to think about.